Hi there, I'm Ilya Lapurev, cellist, as you can see. Welcome to my new series where I'm going to cover old book by Fayard called Studies for the Young Cellist. These exercises are excellent, you know, to develop both our hands, the right and the left hand. This is ideal for beginners, for advanced people and even professionals. Many advanced and professional cellists, they, thought, they think, ah, we don't need this, but trust me, even the big cellists, they do it, you know, as part of their routine. So, let's go straight into it. I'm going to show you right now how it sounds and then I'm going to explain you what you need to pay attention for. So here we are, we just played the exercise, so completely. Uh, what we want to pay attention, there are two things. First of all, what I always mention is the left hand articulation. So this is very important. So when you play, make sure that your fingers are not, you know, very soft. So because if you play soft, it will sound like this. Uh, First of all, when you don't have articulation, you don't have precision. And when you don't have precision, the intonation goes down. So this is important that you hammer with your fingers. What do I mean with hammer with this? So see, an exercise that you can do to develop your articulation is just, you know, to put your bow away, let's say like this, and you play this exercise only with the left hand and make sure that you hear these sounds. And so on. If you don't hear anything of this, of these sounds, that means that you're doing it wrong. Let's say it like this. This is wrong. This is correct. And so on. And this for the whole exercise. Second thing that I want to mention, as there is this expression, let's kill two birds with one stone. So this exercise, of course, is for the left hand. And uh, but I want also to talk something about the right hand arm, actually, for the sound. So it's very easy to play this quite stupidly, right? Because it's just an exercise. It's not very exciting. But let's try to make a nice sound of it. So that means not just like this. So see, no pressure, not stupid, let's make a nicer sound, just like this. Let's try to find a smooth sound. You know, this is good also, when you work this kind of way, it's great because you're gonna also develop the sound of your cello. It doesn't matter which kind of cello you have. If you have a Chinese, you know, factory instrument or anything else, it doesn't matter. Because when you use... When you're trying to find a good sound, any cello will sound great. Really, seriously, this is very important. So. Very important is also to play this exercise with the whole length of the bow. So don't play until the middle, so like this. Now we want to 
to use the whole bow. Um, make it sound. Imagine that you're in a big concert hall. Of course, many of us when you're practicing, we're in a room just like me. But let's try to make the sound wide abroad, you know, like the people when they are sitting really behind the hole, they need to hear you. So let's try to find a deep sound. So with these two things that I just mentioned, then you are doing it great, you know, to have a good way practicing of this exercise. If it's too fast for you, let's say this tempo, it's too fast for you, no worries. You can play much slower. Take the tempo that you feel comfortable with. This is very important. So you can really play even like this. Uh, you can do that. The most important thing I repeat, take the tempo that you feel comfortable. Afterwards, when you master this, you can put the tempo higher. Then you go faster and faster and faster. As you can see here in this exercise number one, I played just the normal exercise. There are variations as well, right? So here I play, for instance, this first variation, how it will sound. second variation, a third, fourth, fifth and sixth. It's optional, you can do that. But uh, I recommend to do that. But first, slowly, then bit by bit, you go faster. Let's take for instance variation number two. It goes like this. The third variation is this. And so on. The fifth and the sixth are really quick. So. So see, that's why it's important, you know, to have this hammering feeling on your fingers. Because again, if you play without any articulation, it will sound like this. And then everything goes wrong. And the intonation and the sound will become floaty. Anyway, it's not the sound that you want. So, first of all, you do it that way, as I said, and you're just going to do fine. And uh, this exercise really afterwards, of course, you will feel tired in your fingers after a while. So I recommend doing this exercise like 10 to 15 minutes per day, just to make sure that this is part of your daily routine. You know, of course, we have scales, arpeggios, double chords, but this must be in your repertoire. It doesn't matter, beginner, amateur, advanced, student, professional. I do this every day and really my fingers, they become stronger. With this, I hope it was clear, my explanations, the way, what you need to pay attention for when you play this exercise. Next time, I will come with number two. Thank you so much for watching. See you.